I'm about to do the hardest thing you'll ever have to do in Redfall. Find anybody else playing this game. Redfall has finally released, and I'm sure that many of you have seen the many, many reviews calling it unfinished, uninspired, garbage gameplay. I was just so curious I couldn't help but dive in for myself and see what all the fuss was about. And there was some fussing to be had, for sure. So I spent about a week with Redfall, and I just want to let everybody know it's not the worst thing ever. It's certainly not great either. There is still a lot of very valid issues with it. For example, if you're playing on console and you're locked at 30 FPS, that would definitely make the experience much worse. And even on PC, there's still plenty of graphical issues with pop-in and textures not loading properly, some weird environmental effects like fog that just completely rip you out of the experience, but the game is okay. I'm pretty confident these things will eventually be fixed, and I know that doesn't help the game right now, but I'm more concerned with the actual structure and bones of the game, right? Is the game itself fun? That's what I want to know. And the gameplay itself is fun enough as a mindless looter zombie shooter, because let's be honest, the vampires might as well be zombies. It's all the same sort of gameplay style. It's fun enough. It's good to just get on, get a couple things done, do some missions, shoot some stuff. It's totally mindless and like not deep at all, but if that's what you're looking for, it is a great game for that. Where this game suffers the most is definitely in the polished. Other than the technical issues, there's also things like no cutscenes available and they try to stylize it and sort of hide it and make it look like a cool thing they're doing on purpose, but but we know. You have all these NPCs in the main hub, but all they do is sigh when you try to talk to them. Hmm. The sprint in this game feels really, really strange. It's almost like you're a car that's accelerating on ice and you don't actually have any bearing of how fast you're going. Like, the camera doesn't move at all while you're sprinting. So I went into my settings and head bob and camera shake were both on. So why is nothing happening between sprinting and walking? It's both the same. I don't know, really strange. Most of the guns are pretty boring and there's also this really weird auto aim that I've never experienced in a game like this before. Like even on keyboard and mouse, you will aim down sight at an enemy and it'll just like snap to their head for you. It's so strange, it makes the game so easy to deal with pretty much any enemy you come across. I don't know if they just wanted you to feel like god mode or something and, and be automatically really good at the game, but it it's weird. The enemy AI in this game also is not good at all. You can shoot someone in the face and right next to you there'll be someone else that you don't even know is there because it takes 10 seconds for them to react and get their gun out and start shooting back at you. That is if you let them live that long. The vampires themselves also tend to get hung up on a lot of objects and kind of stuck pretty easily so they're usually not too bad to deal with and even if they do get close they barely do any damage at all so it's not like they're a real threat most of the time anyway. I do like the idea of doing MOBA style character classes for a game like this. The problem is they don't seem balanced or equal at all. I was playing as Devender who has a javelin that can one-shot vampires if you upgrade it enough, which I did obviously, and a translocator that can teleport him to wherever he throws a disc. Not only that, all of his teammates can also teleport behind him to wherever he threw the disc to. So you get a one shot and a full team teleport to anywhere you can throw something, which includes up or down cliffs or across ravines. Literally wherever you can throw this thing, you can teleport to. Then you have a character like Jacob who has a raven he can throw out to scan for enemies and the ability to turn invisible, walk right past everyone. Not useless, but not nearly as useful, right? It also feels really bad if you choose a character and decide you don't wanna play them after an hour or two because then you have to restart the campaign. Every character is tied to their own campaign for some reason. Even though every enemy is tied to your character level so that if you replay the game at level 30, everything is level 30 against you, you can't just continue where you left off on your campaign at level one. You have to go all the way back. 
Just some very strange choices there, I think. You can loot almost every house in the game, except for the fact there's no consistency in what you can pick up. Some of the cans you can pick up, and some of them you can't. Some water bottles you can pick up, and some of them you can't. So mostly you're just gonna run around and spam the E button on every single item in the room, picking up whatever you can, and looking like a dumbass for whatever you can't. This also has the added benefit of turning on every sink and flushing every toilet that you come across in the entire game. It does nothing, but I mean, it's pretty funny, right? There's also no actual matchmaking service, which is a little bit inexcusable for a party-based looter-shooter type game. Like, they want you to play with people so bad in this, and yet... They don't actually give you a way to do that. So what about your objective in this game? What is the story like? What is it you're trying to do? Well, the story also is kinda not the best. I almost completely lost interest by the time I was done the first map. I know what they're going for with, oh, her blood, it has healing properties. We all need her blood to heal ourselves. And, oh, suddenly we're vampires. Oh no, blood. I get it. I get it, I get it. It just kind of falls flat. And this is probably my biggest complaint with Redfall is that it doesn't just let you do what you wanna do. From my understanding, this was supposed to be an open world game. This is not an open world game. This is more like an open area game with strongly guided linear mission structure. The story missions are done in a way that yes, you can choose between a couple different ones at any given time, usually, but the story missions themselves are tied to specific locations on the map. Hey, you need to go to the hospital and find these patient records. Oh, okay. Well, that would have been nice to know because I just spent two hours running around the map doing side stuff and I just looted through the entire hospital because I thought it was a cool set piece, but now suddenly I have to go back there because it's relevant to the story and a document I could have picked up while I was just there didn't exist yet. In the first map, I ran around the whole map and did all the side stuff I could and explored and had a great time. And then I had to slog through the main missions and go to all the same places all over again. And it would be one thing if you could just go out and find things and bring them back and then you accept a mission and they're like, oh, you already have the hospital documents. Wow, good for you. When'd you get those? Okay, let's move on to the next thing. But you can't do that. It's literally level-based structure just in an open area. You can't get the documents because they haven't spawned yet because you haven't accepted the quest. It's really, really annoying, and it actually discouraged me from exploring the map until I was doing the story missions. And as you can probably tell, that made the gameplay exactly like any other linear mission story-based shooter. It seems like the game just can't quite decide what it wants to be. There's so many conflicting ideas and things going on, it just doesn't add up in my books. And another gripe I have with the story is these memory sequences that take way too long to sit through and only become worse and worse the more times you play through the game. At least the bosses are kind of cool. They're good set pieces at least. They aren't extremely hard or anything like that. I did die to the third one a couple times just because I didn't really understand what was going on. But overall they look cool and they feel cool. There's something that's different, at least, and I can appreciate that. And the story itself isn't that long, either. Like, after doing pretty much all the side content I could, all the safe houses and the main missions, I was still only 15 hours into the game by the time I was done my first playthrough, which, for $70, is kind of a bit of a stinker. I had 612 gamer score out of 1,000, which, you know, without even looking at the achievements beforehand, is pretty good overall. So it was at this point, I decided I was going back for more. No, those 15 hours weren't enough for me. So I decided I was not only going to finish Redfall, I was going to complete it. I took a quick look at the list of achievements I had left to get, and thankfully I didn't see any reach max level on each character, not even a finish the game on the highest difficulty to be seen. So it seemed to me like this could be quite doable. Most of the things I had missed were just optional achievements during specific missions to do a specific thing, so I thought that would be easy enough to clean up on a second playthrough. And I want to preface this second playthrough by also mentioning the main side collectible in the game, 
Grave locks. Between the two maps, there are 100 grave locks to find, which are these blue strands of hair in these tiny containers. And you need each and every single one for the Faith Healer achievement. After my first playthrough, I had about 40 of these. But that 40 might as well have been zero, because if I want to get every single one, I'm going to have to check every single location anyway because I don't know what ones I picked up and what ones I didn't. So just know that during the second playthrough, besides what you're seeing, there's also about an hour and a half on each map where I just had a video up on my monitor and I just walked from place to place, double checking that I had all the grave locks I needed before moving on. It's not fun, it's not interactive, it's completely pointless because all you get are these voice lines, which mostly repeat anyway, by the way. There's not even 100 unique ones. Waste of time, absolutely. But while we were still on the first map, we actually picked up a couple optional side quest achievements as well. Some place to be is for reaching a landing site before the supplies land in a supply drop side quest. So basically you just click the laser and then run as fast as you can towards the balloons. Easy enough. Empty nest syndrome is for destroying a vampire nest without waking any of the vampires inside. Once again, pretty easy to do it. If you're trying to do it, you just kind of sneak around everybody, especially in the early levels. There doesn't seem to be as many vampires in the nests, so you should be fine. Dexterity save is for taking the survival tips out of Bob's house without triggering any of the trip wires. This one looks a little tough at first, but Devinder's Teleport can really help you out, or if not, you can also use rewire kits to save yourself from hitting the really hard to avoid ones. Cry in the Dark is for destroying the Wailing Shadow. I had no idea what this meant, and in fact, I'm pretty sure this one is actually one of the secret achievements, so off to the internet I went. This is the most out of character achievement in this game. You need to go to a specific grave, which is not in the graveyard it's right next to, by the way, it's up on the hill outside of the graveyard, then take a flare gun, shoot it into the air, and the wailing shadow will spawn. How you're supposed to know any of that is beyond me. The flare gun is not something you ever use like this anywhere else in the game to activate something. I don't know, it's beyond me. So after a quick and easy battle with the Wailing Sh- So after a quick and easy battle with the Wailing Shadow, the achievement is ours. I Spit on Your Grave involves stealing Dr. Hunt's father's watch after you lay it on his tombstone, because you're just a total asshole, I guess. An asshole with an easy achievement. Ask not for whom the horns blow just requires you to go up to the lighthouse before you go down to the boat during Fall Like Lightning, Turn these levers off, boom, easy achievement. And right this way, a nice try are two opposite achievements that I found out you can't actually get at the same time. Despite my best save and quit efforts, I could only get one at a time. So if we're right this way, you just have to move between the two maps without going through the wrong door, which is easy enough because the right one glows red. We'll have to come back for a nice try, which is for getting three wrong doors in a row later. On to the second map, and we once again have a couple main storyline achievements to get as we make our way through those missions. Rum Runner is just for going to the White Farm for the first time through a specific tunnel on the north side of the map instead of coming from the south like most people would. Black Light Down is done at that same time by turning off the UV lights that are in the stronghold and leaving them off for the rest of the mission. Easy enough. So anyway, I started Blastin and Sepsis are two achievements that both involve the same mission and are kind of two sides of the same coin, one's for being hostile and one's for being friendly. So I wasn't really sure if I was gonna be able to do both of these at the same time, but thankfully I was able to get Sepsis by poisoning the blood and then quitting immediately, coming back, and then shooting at the enemies and causing a disturbance to get so anyway i started blasting then we have cut the lights which is during lost in the fog you just have to turn off all the uv lights which are next to the lighthouse here and then make your way up to the annex and kill bob once you see him as long as you've already done the other side quest with bob you should be fine then we had a couple side quest achievements as well what lies below sisterhood and eagle eyes what lies below is for going into the Irving family mausoleum. You just have to ring the bell six times and drop on in. This one has a pretty clear hint, unlike the Miss Whisper one, so that's fine. Sisterhood is kind of like the main side quest of this second map, if you were to ask me. You're kind of going all over the place 
three different locations to grab three different room keys from three different vampires. The three keys all unlock doors in the house for each of the sisters' rooms, and then you get into the basement and finish the quest. Once again, I kind of had to use a guide for this because I wasn't really sure how to look at the photos after you picked them up. There's probably a way to do it, but I scrolled through the menus and I couldn't find them again, so. And then you have Eagle Eyes, which involves you navigating this cave system and getting three supply crates without tripping any of the trip wires. Huh. I didn't get the achievement. I wonder, that's weird. I didn't hit any of the trip wires. Well, as it turns out, if you wake any of the vampires that are in these caves, they can actually set off the trip wires and ruin your achievement. Isn't that lovely? And despite my lightning fast reflexes, I was not able to save and quit and keep this quest intact. And you know what that means? We gotta start all over again. At the very least, we know we have to go back and do the doors again for a nice try anyway, so I guess that's fine. Back again, leave the vampires asleep, achievement unlocked. And with the last of our grave locks, that means we're set. All the achievements in Redfall, we did it. Or have we? I'm about to do the hardest thing you'll ever have to do in Redfall. Find anybody else playing this game. There's actually five achievements that I haven't mentioned yet, and they all have to do with the best part of the game. The broken online multiplayer. There is an achievement tied to each of the characters, but not each of the characters you play as, each of the characters you play with. This game has an online mechanic called trust, where you play with someone and you build trust between your two characters, and they level up and they become better friends, whatever. As you do missions, kill things, whatever, you're also earning trust. You need to reach maximum trust, which is level four, with each other character in the game. Oh, did I say each other character? There's actually one for each character, including the one you're playing as. So you also need to start a new character just so you can play with someone who's playing as who you were playing with and get your trust all the way up with them. Does that sound like fun to anyone? Not to mention this level four trust can take two hours or more. And that's playing with the same person as the same character. If you change who you're playing with and they also play that character, doesn't matter, you're back to zero. If the person you're playing with changes to a different character, that also doesn't count because now you're working on someone else. You need continuous straight play with the same person on the same character for multiple hours for each of these achievements. Add in the pain in the ass of just getting a new character started so you can get the trust of the character you actually play. It's an absolute nightmare. Oh yes, and to top it all off, there's also an achievement called Friends Till the End, which is for getting level four trust with three other characters all in the same game at the same time. Full party, continuous play, full trust. Thankfully, by the time I managed to scrounge together a four-person lobby, we all found out that the Friends Till the End achievement is actually bugged. And not only that, the entire trust system itself is completely bugged. You see, Friends Till the End requires you to get level four trust with three other people all at the same time. However, as the game currently stands, Trust is bugged and always shows as level 4. This means that Friends Till the End will instantly trigger as long as you are in a full party, which is pretty awesome, right? Well, sadly this doesn't work for the individual character trust levels, and you'll still need to level those up to level 4 to get each of those achievements. However, the trust will always show as level 4 even when it's not. So you have no idea how far away you are from getting to level four trust because it always says level four anyway. You just have to blindly hope that you're actually making progress with no tangible way to actually tell how long you need to play for. It's absolute agony. And to let you in on a bit of a secret, I'm just sort of hoping as I'm recording this that in the future I've done these achievements so I can say I've gotten all the achievements because as it stands right now, I don't have any of these character achievements. I got the friends till the end because it's bugged, but any of the other trust achievements, I don't have 
a single one yet. I've tried for hours with multiple different people and everyone just ends up dropping off right before you think you're about to finish. So yeah, hopefully I'm able to show on screen that I've completed this and it's finished. And if not, maybe that's a sign. Maybe it's time to give up. But either way, thank you so much for watching. This game was not as bad as it could have been, in my opinion, honestly, but in other ways, just so, so painful. I think what bothers me the most about Redfall is it has the makings of a good game. Like, you can see how if this went differently, this could have been great. It's fun, bare bones, shooter action, but there's just so many weird design choices, so many technical issues going on like it just has so much bogging it down that it's impossible to say with confidence that redfall as it stands at the moment is a good 70 dollar video game the only reason i'm playing it is because i have pc game pass if even if i had xbox game pass on a console i probably still wouldn't play it because it's at 30 fps so if you release a game on game pass that even people with xboxes don't want to play and then on Steam, you're charging $70 for it? That's a tough go, man. Like, that's a really, really rough game. Anyway, that was my journey with Redfall. I hope you got some joy out of my misery, at least. We can make it worth it that way. I didn't really set out to complete this game when I first started playing it, but that's what I ended up doing, and honestly, I wish I hadn't. Here you go. You got a video out of it. Hopefully you liked it. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If you want to see more videos like this one, leave me a like as well. Let me know this is what you want to see. And that'll do it for me for this one. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye for now.